Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get back into it. Um, the thing about, uh, so this is a really deep um, thing that uh, Moffat has done. Um, beauty, goodness, and truth uh, are what uh, Aristotle refers to as uh, the transcendentals. And we're not talking about uh, transcendental meditation here. The transcendentals, um, they're qualities of being that transcend time and space. So if one transcendental is present like beauty, so must all other transcendentals because uh, they're fundamental to being, to anything that exists. And because they're kind of, they're the essence of anything that exists, that's where happiness is. That's where our happiness is. So Moffat's, uh, yeah. He's gone very deep on this. He went there. I mean, he definitely doesn't have problems uh, going deep or having substance and um, incorporating the mythos of other intellectual movements, philosophical beliefs, you know, different stories and, and, and universes. He, he brings it all in somehow. You know, that's definitely not his issue. But sometimes, you know, we said it again. We said it before. We'll say it again. He sets the bar high. It's like, wow, all this stuff. He's just all these seeds he's planting. Can he possibly cultivate them all? <laughs> and this kind of addresses um, the comment: um, Does Doctor Who live up to our highest expectations of science fiction? Because there's a recommendation here, and the recommendation is that somehow. Maybe we, that means you and me and everyone in the audience, what we really need is some uh, super doses of beauty. And maybe if we got those doses of beauty, if we understood beauty deeply, the world would be a much better place. Mm. There we go. So are we getting to the philosophy of uh, episode two now? Yes, we are. All right. So we're going to go deep on it. Well, um... You know, you said it's not really the 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 whole bit of Aristotle. You know, it's a whole different era. Obviously, Aristotle. Uh, what what century was Aristotle from? That's much older, old school stuff. I don't know. Maybe Is he like it's pre- almost two thousand years, probably. Yeah, it's like definitely well before Renaissance, medieval time. Oh yeah, yeah. So I don't know exact century, but. Transcendentalism is usually associated with like mid nineteenth century. It's a more mm-hmm. modern uh philo- philosophical uh space. But I think it still relates here because um it's kind of the whole notion of um divine truth, you know, could be that how it could be known intuitively. So if this Dalek felt that, that he had an epiphany when he saw the birth of the star, right? Rusty had an epiphany in that in that moment, you could say that then, you know, there's almost a sense of, of intuitive knowledge being bestowed upon him. Because it's just, you know, if someone who's not really, doesn't really have their heart open to that, they see the birth of a star, it's like, okay, cool, cool story, bro. <laughs> but right. uh, that for someone that's really, you know, emptied their cup, so to speak, they get that that's a moment of inspiration right there. And, that's, and I right. think that's a transcendental um, notion, you yeah. know? And 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 I think you know to a degree too. Um, since we see transcendentalism a lot in in religion, there's always like that that feeling that that the universe and its vastness and the unknown um, reminds us that 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 God is great or whatever or whoever you believe in um, as as the big ultimate being or beings. You know, we respect all that all your everybody's beliefs, but and it reminds us that. We are not our everyday problems. We are, we are, and we are more than that. So we're more than uh, our headaches, you know, car breaking down or even a disability. Um, you know, I have my, my friend from social media, Nisha, who has cerebral palsy. And, you know, she can just lay there and do nothing and say, oh, my life sucks. Um, because uh, I can't really walk or feed myself. But she's actually on social media trying to raise money for, I don't know, who, 
water projects in Africa or, you know, something else. So, and that's a beautiful thing. That's a very beautiful thing. She sees herself as being able to make a change, a positive change in the world. And that's transcendental. Yeah. So it's that whole thing of, you know, that whole notion of going beyond the physical and the immediate, the things that most people consider their world and going well beyond that. So I think that, that, you know, that the whole thing that Moffat did with setting up uh, Aristotle and all the themes throughout that very much, uh, transcendental, um, we could also say it's like, uh, existentialism to a degree too, because, and I mentioned this before, but you know, Daleks for the most part, they're almost on autopilot, right? Exactly. Autopilot hate. Autopilot hate. So is that an existence? I mean, they're sentient, but if they only have a single purpose and essentially no freedom of, of choice, no, no free will, is that an, an existence? They don't have the, as we saw in this episode, they don't have uh, the ability to to enjoy they they can only follow orders and they can kill and is that a life is that a life that any of us would want mhm exactly and I, and actually this episode was, was huge because i think it's one of the first times we really understood the inner workings of the daleks cuz they went inside the dalek right and we saw that they do have the capacity to love they do have the capacity to make to have choice, but they actually are built to inhibit their own emotions. They have circuitry that inhibits yes. th those parts of them. So this whole notion of a good Dalek opened up a whole new world. Because if the Daleks could become good and change, then who that then it, that leaves a void for a greater evil. And you know, I think the universe is a constant balancing act. You know, when a great good comes, a great evil appears somewhere else sure you know it's the yin and the yang or the devil at work whatever way you want to look at it it's definitely it happens all the time you know you can be having a great day but then something bad in the world happened it's like well can i really enjoy this great moment when there's stuff like this going on in the world you know that's the human struggle that is um another thing i mean we could go really deep on this <laughs> There was something else I was going to say that was going to blow your mind. And I just had, totally had a brain fart. This is why I don't do things early in the day. <laughs> That's all right. You're doing awesome. I, we're like, doing awesome. We, we are. I'm enjoying the conversation. We, we were about to go really deep, though. There was something, there was something you said that, 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 that triggered another thought. And I really liked it. Uh-oh. Yeah. My memory sucks. Oh, I know. So I have them, you know, two two old farts running the show. Oh, we got we got to keep more guests on there to keep us. Uh, we got some, yeah, yeah, we need some young people. Some young people. <laughs> uh, but um, I mean, I think, we, I think we hit upon the main things there. Yeah. Um. You know, so yeah, they they could have a, you know Daleks could have a moral compass. Uh, they just by design. They, they they got any kind of uh, you know humanity or you know uh, real they just they just exist they exist but in the sense that they survive but they do not thrive. It's like a machine. Like a machine, exactly. And then you know that's always an old a old argument is if, if a machine becomes self aware, and, you know, and it's able to make decisions, is it alive? You know, but humans face that every day. You know, if if you're li living a life where all you're doing is a routine and you're just going through it mechanically, is that really a life? You know, are you really driven by purpose or just by habit? Because then, I mean, animals are alive, but is it really living? Mm -hmm. mm. They have to, because somehow, life means taking joy in life. Not not constantly, but you know, there has to be some enjoyment and savoring of of of, of life, of of beauty, you know. 
Well, I think there's a big distinction between contentment and gratification. Right. Uh, unfortunately, mainstream society pursues self gratification to to extreme sometimes, right? But there's no nothing... instant self gratification. Oh yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean vines, hello, six second videos. <laughs> we talked about this before. Yeah. But you know, there's nothing wrong with those things, but when it's an, an excess it's a, it's an excess, you know, you don't have that balance. It's it's that's that's when it gets bad. Uh there's something to be said about being content. Not necessarily satisfied. You always wanna evolve, mature, grow, develop, pursue greater things. You know, that some so the human race could move along further, you know? Right. But find, be content with what you have today and what you could do today and who you could touch today. Well, I think that's the difference, you know. If you're thankful for what for the good things that you have. Um you know, that's the starting point because if you're unhappy, if all you are is unhappy and you're just going through the motions, yeah, it kind of sucks. And, and we, we all want, we want more. We want, we want more beauty. We want more goodness. Uh, you know, we want to feel a connection with each other and the world. So, so just going through the motions just doesn't take us there. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. So maybe the recommendation here would, would be that you know we, you and you and I, we need a we just need a big enough dose of beauty, and the world would be a much better place, you know. But it, Heck but yeah. uh, you know, understanding that the beauty comes in many different ways. I, I don't sure. mean the vernacular version of beauty. Just like you know, the other day, I, like. If you can follow me on Instagram, I have sometimes the most asinine shares on there. Like I find the most random things, and I'm I'm fascinated by it. I took a picture of a moth that was huge and looked like a butterfly, and I, and I just asked people. I, I knew it was a, I pretty much knew it was a moth, but I said, "Is this a moth or a butterfly?" I'm so intrigued, and people responded to that really well. They're like, "Wow, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a lunar that's a lunar moth or something like that." Mm -hmm. And but I found beauty in that, and, and, and for in the hustle of bustle. Of my of my day, I stopped, looked at it, and just smiled. I said, "Wow, the, you know that this world is just full of surprises. It's, it's such a silly thing to the average person, but to me, it was a special moment because I noticed it. And it's like right. the proverbial stopping to smell the roses. And to me, there was beauty in that in that moth. You know, it was just hanging out on on a bush. You know, and it flew briefly as if to catch my attention." through my peripheral view and uh, I stopped and looked at it and then hung out with it briefly. And you didn't have to pay for that. I did not have to pay for that. There's so much free goodness to be experienced. Yes. Uh, it's so true. I think we get into the trap of thinking that we have to pay for anything good and satisfying. Well, of course, that's what advertising and marketing wants us to believe. Oh, yeah. I mean, if, 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 if the world really learn the truth at once then all business was shut down because there's <laughs> so many things that so many businesses that are um, hinged upon uh, selling commodities and luxuries and entertainment things we don't really need they're nice false to have promises. false, false promises. promises yes like uh, axe <laughs> <laughs> axe spray mm -hmm. Some of those smell really nice, though. Oh, yeah, they do. Well, I'm not talking about the, how it smells. I'm talking about, you know, I know. 100 women are not going to mob you. Yeah, yeah. Though I remember one time I did wear... I remember once... <laughs> no, no, no. This is a true story. See, this, this is a this is a paid promotion. <laughs> this is not an axe plug. It's, it's actually a plug for Jean-Paul Gaultier, our, our sponsor. Now I'm kidding. It. But I did, I did have... I remember one time I was wearing uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier... Uh, there's a, a scent that has like a vanilla. It's it's really kind of homoerotic when you look at it because the bottle's a a naked man. Well, completely. Pretty much. He's he's got tight tight clothes on. His junk is his junk is very prominent. But I like the way it smelled. It had like, it was a cologne that, and I still use it to this day. That, uh, that has like a vanilla scent to it. And I remember I was walking in um, I would believe I was in Forest Hills, Queens, in uh, New York City, uh, visiting a friend. 
and this was years ago, and uh, I, I, I felt like I was being followed. So I finally stopped, and there's a woman following me behind. It might just raining. You know, it was raining on and off that day, if I recall correctly. And 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 I stop and I turn around and this and this girl's like smiling. I'm like, okay, creeper. She's, she's, <laughs> a, she's an attractive lady, a very attractive woman. And I and I and and she said, I'm sorry, I've been following you around because that that you smell so good. I need to know what cologne you're wearing. And I'm like, uh, it's so and so. And she's like, great, I'm gonna get it for my boyfriend. I'm like, okay, awkward. <laughs> So you went out and bought a lifetime supply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should have. Yeah, no. Yeah, you know, I, I I like this cologne. It's not my favorite, but it's apparently, you know, I think what we men find smells good isn't the same for women, quite often. True. Because my better half, like this cologne that I love to wear, because I like the way it smells on me, and I'll sniff myself because I'm weird. I have a thing about There's old. There's nothing wrong. Well, you know, I have I have a bit of an olfactory fetish. I like sure. nice smells, delicious smells, oh, sweet smells, too. citrus yeah. scents. I grow lots of uh, fragrant flowers in my garden just because of that. Oh, yeah, I do like uh, some mint. Yeah, I got mint. I got lilies. I got roses. I got all sorts of nice, nice smells. Mostly in the spring. You, you like uh, rosemary? The scent of the rosemary. I like it, um, but I'm. I think my my favorite is is the lily. It's kind of sweet and makes me happy. <laughs> oh, see, the beauty and simplicity. Oh yeah. So you know, um, one last bit. You know, while we wrap up this philosophy discussion, we gotta keep it moving. We do have a lot of voicemail. We want to share some comments. Uh, a lot of community love uh, from our wonderful Hoovian uh, friends. But um, so you know. The, the philosophical uh, construct definitely has some truth in it. Just don't hinge all your beliefs on it. I think any social construct that we subscribe to, it, it should help us challenge our beliefs and, and grow. But I, think, I don't think we should o- always just blindly follow one movement. It's, I think to be human is to be a dynamic individual and, and, and question existence and, and, not, and not just follow one way, but kind of have an amalgamation of beliefs. But you know, it, we you know since we're young, you know, we all, we, we learn about Santa Claus, right? Ever, ever since you know, where we lads or, or girls, you know, we learn about Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny, but for most of us, uh, uh, and it, and we believe in that lie. And there's nothing wrong with that lie. I think there's beauty in having those dreams and 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 believing in the unseen. That's something. Well, they're beautiful ideas. They are. And. Uh... Yeah, I don't think, I don't know. I mean, I've wrestled with that for a long time. But ultimately, I think it's it's okay to to focus on beautiful things in that way. And, you know, so as long as you can live with uh, the idea that there is a Santa Claus, you know, it's a happy feeling. You know, every now and then I like to, I like to believe that he existed or he still exists in some way. I like to be, I think it's... You know, I think there's there's two big problems in, in worldwide, not just in American culture, but worldwide. I see this everywhere. You know, uh, one people are afraid to. It's 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 a weird thing. People they're immature, but then they don't know how to see the world through the eyes of a kid. There's two very different things. You you is when you, as you become older, it's important to mature. But that does not mean give up that childlike innocence and or, or be afraid to be a kid every now and then. That's good. That's healthy. Laugh. Well, yeah, that is. I mean, think about. So yes, as we grow up, as we become adults, we shouldn't act childishly, which means that we shouldn't act without an awareness of the consequences of our actions. Right. But we shouldn't lose wonder. And curiosity and playfulness. Mm. We shouldn't lose those. We should never lose those. We shouldn't give them up. We should not. And, and with that, I think another thing that, that happens, and I, I believe it's, it's why we see a constant progression of the younger generations growing up faster, getting pregnant younger. We have shows, TV shows, 
all over the place. They glorified like teenage pregnancy. They make it like almost whimsical. Now, mind you, they do have that for legal purposes. They have a disclaimer, you know, use protection or just abstain, blah, blah, blah. Because they have to say that. But the show, when you watch it, it's like, like you know, 14, 15 year old girls are portraying to be that are, you know, engaging in sexual acts and stuff. And, you know, I'm not saying that's wrong, that's wrong in itself, but it's like, uh, what happened to just enjoying your youth and not rushing to be grown up, you know, playing right. in the dirt, uh, playing with action figures, you know, building things with Lincoln logs or whatever or construction or uh, construction, uh, some kind of whatever kind of uh, uh, erector sets. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Whatever kind of building blocks you like. You know, doing things Legos. Use imagination. Legos. Yeah. I mean, using your imagination, playing with, play, with, with clay, uh, putty. You know, use your imagination and, you know, listen to, you know, classic radio. So there's a lot of things we've lost and people want to grow up so fast. You know, I, I, I'm going through it with, with uh, my kids and it's, it's like, ah, uh, you know, you have so much time for that stuff. Why rush it? I wish I could go back to youth ball and really enjoy life without any worries. Why bring yourself for trouble? But with <laughs> they that, they, little they do know. they know. They don't. They know. No matter how much they tell them stories, you know, they don't. They they have to go through it themselves, and that's that's a lot. Most, most that's not just that's not just that's not, not just that's not just kids. That's humankind. We often have to just fall flat on our faces before we go. Wow, that was a bad idea. But you know, the the problem is people have forgotten how to dream. They've let go. Oh, yeah. they, they've lost their dreams, you know. And people that think they have big dreams, they don't. Wanting a certain car or a house that looks like X, Y, and Z is not a dream. I'm sorry. That dream may excite you, but it will not fill your heart with with love and beauty. It will not make you cry if you do not pursue it completely. Right. Not the way something like I, my dream is to be able to take my mom out of the ghetto and, and, and put her into the home she always wanted so she oh, could man. have a good place to, to spend the rest of her days. I hear that. You know what I promised my mom when I was a kid? Promised her a Rolls Royce. I, I have not uh, delivered on that. and It bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me personally, I, I I always tell my mom, you know what, we should get like a multi-family home. You can have your own area because I know you like your your privacy, or as our UK friends like to say, privacy. I love that. Timmy with me, Timmy with me. I'm sorry, I gotta bring it back there. But yeah, I, I tell her that. I said, I'd love to have you there. My mom's a difficult person. She doesn't do well with crowds. Uh, neither do I. But I've learned to go beyond my introverted ways. I've become me a, too. Yeah, it's tough. Though. Hey, I didn't know that about you because you're very extroverted. Yeah, I'm. I'm really you, actually an introvert. You built that up pretty well. I did, dude. You worked on it. It, it took a lot of personal development because, for the most part, people annoy me because it's so much ignorance <laughs> in the world. It's like, ah, oh, stop. Is it. this a, is this a Yogi Zilla that's so full of love? <laughs> I I am full of love. You are full of love. Just sometimes I have. To, I, sometimes I I like to be the man sitting on the mountainside, looking from a cliff, and going, ah, I don't know if I'm ready to go into that right now. <laughs> I hear you. And then I go back into the cave for a bit, and unplug. I think we all have. Uh, we all need some time to unplug, especially now with you know social media and everything happening so fast. Well, and social media has become antisocial. <laughs> yeah, in a way, it has. Yeah. But uh, how about voicemail, man? I want to hear. We do I have hear voicemail. our people. We do have voicemail, and we got the we got comments to read, and that might be all we have time for us outside of the uh, plugs and um, closing thoughts. But are you you ready? I'm ready. You sure? Yeah. Are you really sure? Please, dude. <laughs> you gotta say heck yes, like the uh, wonderful uh, voice talent that we hired. Or heck what you yes, hired. we need voicemail. <laughs> I love it. All right, here we go. Soft kitty, warm kitty, 
little ball of fur. Happy kitty, sleepy kitty, purr, purr, purr. <laughs> Hi, guys. This is Jennifer calling from Colorado Springs. I was looking for a Doctor Who fix and stumbled upon Timey Wimey Tea Time. And that is where I heard the voice of Stan. Wow. Um, I like your show. I wish it was a little bit shorter because I'm really busy. But I will uh, tune in again. Way to go, guys. And uh, Stan, you could be a rock star with that voice. Hi, Yogi Zilla and Stan. My name is Michelle R. And I'm from Indiana. I love, love Doctor Who and I love your Tea Time podcast. It's the best Doctor Who podcast ever. It's funny, intelligent, and down to earth. Just Yay. leave Michonne out of it, okay? She's LP. <laughs> I'll look for a new podcast on Saturday. Don't let me down. Kiss, kiss. Wow, what what amazing, amazing uh, voicemail messages. Uh, but I, I I particularly enjoyed the last one because I, I I there's something about her speech that really drew me in. I like the way she. I don't know. There's something about her delivery that that really worked for me. Resonated with me. I don't know. Did you catch that too? Did you feel that? I don't know. She feels like uh, some kind of vice president, president of a major corporation, which is cool. You know, we got friends in big places. So did it sound? Did it sound very formal and proper to you, or did it sound authentic and just heartfelt? Confident. Definitely confident. Very I think confident. I think all of our voicemails were very confident. Yes. Uh, all, yeah, yeah. You you are. Uh, oh, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's awesome to get the love. It is awesome to get Thank the love. Thank you, everyone. Thank I, you so much. I enjoyed the singing. Uh, I might have to put together a little mix. I might. We honestly, the whole the whole contest was rather tongue in cheek. I mean, I do have sleep apnea, but uh. I don't think Stan was aware of that. <laughs> Not really. So, so, but you know, I think I will actually put together a mix to go to sleep with. I I do usually like to go to sleep with uh, podcasts or audio books and stuff like that. Effect and just listen to it. Sometimes I go to sleep with TV, but I prefer the the just the the the, the, the audio because then I could just imagine things in my head and not have to strain my eyes reading something. I, I enjoy that. You just sit back and just. And immerse myself in that and get lost in that. And uh, everybody has some very nice. Uh, they say your voice is great, Stan, but uh, some very lovely voices there. Yes, there are. Seriously. So and Stan, and Stan's already a rock star. <laughs> but I think uh, he's becoming a podcast rock star now. Wow. <laughs> All right. So I mean, we can say a lot more about those wonderful messages. Keep them coming. Uh, yes. No, the number once again is two zero six four one five four nine eight seven. And you know what? I should probably put that up on the video. I don't think I do have it up on there. I'm gonna change that. But while um, I update that, Stan, uh, do we have uh, any comments? We've got lots of uh, YouTube comments. I think you have to you can start with. Uh... Planet Pineapple. All right, so lay down on us. It's in Spanish, man. <laughs> oh. Well, I was trying to multitask. Oh, yeah, it is, that I, one is I don't Spanish. want to butcher it. Well, she's, uh, Planet Pineapple says, Por favor, por favor, los sábados solo. Uh, so, Pla Planet Pineapple, and she's not the only one that said the sim a very similar thing. Pleading that we that we do Saturdays, you know, so we get it. We're gonna do Saturday shows. We're gonna stick to it. Yeah. But, but wait a minute. Where are you guys in the chat? I don't see you. I know. I know that most of it. Most folks find us through YouTube, and that's great. But the the best way to experience it is live. So you can chat with us and join us for tea. Definitely. So we're we'll, we'll stick to Saturdays, but we want to see more of you guys in the Twitch channel. And when we go on all games, we want to see you more on, uh, on the all games chat as well. Right. Uh, multiple ways to enjoy us live coming soon. So, like right now, they could come to www. 
twitch.tv forward slash geeky antics and you can chat with us and that would be cool it would be very cool so you keep reading the rest of the comment i'm gonna okay i'm, I'm updating the little news ticker scroller All marquee right, so chelsea love writes what were your three favorite doctor who regenerations and why that's that's a great one um so I'll give uh, one of my favorites. Uh, it's uh, the doctor's looking up at Rose, and he says, "I just wanted to tell you that you were fantastic." But you know what? <laughs> so was I. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and then Eccleston became the silly schoolboy that thinks he's a man. I mean, a uh, tenant. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Ah, uh, you got one, Yogi. Regeneration scene. Uh, this one might choke me up a little bit. Um, so I don't want to go. Whines Tenant. Then Tenant becomes the handsome monkey from outer space. Right? <laughs> I mean, uh, Matt Smith. <laughs> I'm a girl. Exclaims the doctor as he feels his floppy head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was so hilarious. It it it, it, it helped balance the uh, the sadness. It did. I I, I still I'm so, I was surprised Chris Chris for being so so such a keen person just observing so many things that we even missed. I'm surprised he didn't feel that 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 emotional burden that 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 sentimental nature that that uh david Tennant portrayed so well oh, he sure. was a very heavy doctor in that aspect he was but uh even in the interviews when he said when you know again i go back to it when he, they interviewed him and said you know i can't believe this will be the last time i'll be the doctor and he broke out in tears every time i think about that i get chills and i'm like okay i don't want to cry too Stop <laughs> it. in that aspect i'm very empathetic which is not typical for introverts i don't think right I wonder, I keep wondering, can Capaldi make us love him like the others have? Because, you know, the the new Doctors have been good. They have captured it, the Doctor in one way or the other. Yeah. Can he be so good that he actually goes for four seasons? Huh? That's I don't want to see a regeneration immediately. You know? Yeah, I, I don't. I, I We need to space them out. Um, right. I mean, it's unavoidable if, you know, the actor leaves. Right. Uh, or, or he gets to ax, but uh, I mean, I, I, I guess that part is avoidable. Uh, there's ways they can work with the actor. But, I all right, first, I do love I do love uh, Peter Capaldi. I'm already falling for him. Oh. Bro, bro man style. I like him. I really do. Oh, I want I want him strong words. I want him to be a great doctor, and I know he can be. I'm still scared though. I'm very very scared. And four seasons right now looks very rough. Uh, it's possible, but not very probable. That's all I'm gonna say on that. Cause you have another quote, don't you? Okay. <laughs> So the other quotes from Tom Baker, who had seven seasons of Doctor Who. And at the end, he's laying there on the ground, surrounded by uh, some companions. And uh, he kind of opens his eyes and he looks up and he's like, it's the end. Mm. But the moment has been prepared for. That is so classy. So it's saying, don't despair. I know I am the doctor, but it's going to be okay. Well, Peter Davidson wasn't that okay, but <laughs> but, <laughs> but he he was still better than than Mo. Yes, he was better than Mo. Uh, none of this judo chop, uh, flu <laughs> plane crap. I mean, that's the doctor I'll watch just to like laugh at myself. And I'm morbidly curious to go back to those days. But Peter Davis, I don't remember being too bad other than they tried too hard to 
to make him like a dashing, ravishing, strapping yes. young man. And yes. uh, yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but other yeah. than that, I don't think he, he's not the worst. Next, dude, you're up. Next, I'm actually sending out a tweet, and I'm trying to figure out where where all the uh, our fellow Whovians are with all this uh, hubbub they were making about Saturday, 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 and then we finally decided on it. Where are you guys? But maybe they didn't know. I mean, maybe you know because they were asking for Saturday, and they didn't. We didn't give them. We didn't have a way to really give them an answer. Well, I tweeted. So, I mentioned people on the YouTube comments. I you sent should. an email blast out to those that are subscribed to the mailing list. Um, Which is crossed... why people should subscribe to the mailing list. Exactly. I put it in the forums. And again, that's why they should be in the forums. I, I put yeah. it everywhere. I, I went on a Tumblr, Instagram, everywhere. Like Pinterest. But they'll see this on YouTube. They will. And they'll be tuned in for next week. And hopefully they'll feel our pain realizing that. <laughs> Even though oh, okay. we have a great crowd, we have a great crowd, but you know, we would have loved to have more people come. Oh yeah, no excuses, guys. Next Saturday, what's the next Saturday? The eleventh? No, the thirteenth. Thirteenth. Gosh, it's already wow. No way. Next Saturday is the twelfth. No, it's thirteenth. Oh, it is the fifteenth. Yeah. I don't know. My math skill was like when we will be second. here at what nine or ten or ten. We gotta still figure out this. I guess we're gonna start do it start start it up at nine or t- uh, I don't know. Depends on the travel arrangements. Cause we got a we got a party to go to. Yeah, we got a bit of a drive too. So let's say for now, tentatively ten a.m. Because I don't want to go too early. Right. People on the West Coast, that means they have to be up at seven a.m. Yeah. That'd be hard. Um, but for people, you know, overseas, you know, that might be like two. PM or 4 PM, so it won't be too bad. That right. way, I just write in. They can catch us before Doctor Who airs. Though some people apparently catch Doctor Who um, midweek. I was seeing some tweets. People were watching episode three, like on Wednesday or Thursday. I'm like, really? Oh, neat. But oh, I want to mention. Uh, King Deem says uh, he's been the most vocal person in the chat right now. But he said, you know, um, he said uh, that he felt the same with. David Tennant and Matt Smith, uh, that you had really had to warm up to them. And then when you finally do, they're gone. Uh, but he has the same love that we, that we had in episode zero, our pilot episode, for uh, Christopher Eccleston. He loves the Eccleston. He said it is, it's a shame that he only lasted one season. But, you know, humans, we're, we're fickle creatures, and sometimes we can't agree with each other, and <laughs> we, we oust each other. But uh, yeah, Eccleston definitely, we definitely needed to see more of him. Who knows? Maybe he could come back somehow. You never know. And then there's Captain Jack. Yes. Uh... <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and uh, Nick also feels the same kind of love. He likes the late time slot. Yeah, but this is tea time, so it fits in an afternoon slot or an evening kind of thing. Late night, I don't think it would work for it. Definitely not. You can't have tea time at midnight. Yeah. <laughs> For our other, but you we know. We could do some bonus things, late night bonuses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I know Yogi Zilla wants to do those bonuses. Yeah, we could do like late night viewing sessions together. More yeah. For our, more for like our, um, you know, group viewing sessions and whatnot. Our, our U.S. people will do that, you know. Yeah. Um, I also got a, got a, a, a message. The reason I got distracted is because I got a message on, uh, on Instagram, talking about Torchwood, that what happened with them, it seems like they ran out of funding. And that comes to us from Timeless Lord. Ouch. Who's, uh... But he said, yeah, unfortunately, I think they ran through their funding before the show could get picked up again. It's canceled now. I don't think it's been confirmed canceled. Because the last time I saw Russell T. Davies said it, it was in um, a hiatus. It wasn't formally canceled. It's just in uh, TV, TV hell. <laughs> Purgatory limbo. Yeah, but uh, if you're on Instagram, uh, check out Timeless Lord. Uh, they got some really cool uh, Doctor Who related stuff. I'm really enjoying it, and I need to put this down before I get distracted. Now, I I can see the appeal the kids have in uh, this stuff. 
Emilio, don't forget Emilio. Yes, Emilio Gomez writes, Puedo oír los tambores. El maestro está por venir. Puedo oír los tambores. <laughs> so he hears... He hears the gong, he hears the bell, the, 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 the bell is tolling. The master is, is, is soon to be upon us. Wow. That would be interesting. Yeah, and, uh, and Emilio the new seems... doctor meets the master. Yeah, yeah. And maybe the, the master has a new face. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. we, we did hint upon, uh, we did hint at that. But uh, uh, Emilio seems like... Uh, he might be in some kind of uh, creative space because uh, very good use of parallelism there. And the repetition. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like that when it's done right. Almost Ernest Hemingway without the wordiness. Because gosh, uh, I thought I could be verbose, but Hemingway, I think. Maybe <laughs> Hemingway is the reason I'm like this. Uh -huh. <laughs> you got one for us? Another comment for us? All right, Scarlet Dean. What did you think about the rogue... Dalek. Why? Why? Uh, why did the doctor let him go? Hmm. Hmm. I mean, all I can say is, Rusty will go on to become known as the Judas Unit, the Slayer of the Slee Stack, the Smasher of the Weeping Angels, the Ark of the Covenant, because we had no idea. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a great war. We see, we've seen the themes and the mention of soldiers in some way or other from the beginning. Yes. We've seen lost civilizations desperately, desperately trying to hold on. We get a feeling that there's a great puppet master that's pulling the strings behind the scenes for everything. Missy could be that puppet master. We don't know for sure. Yes. She's definitely definitely uh, an uh, omniscient uh, presence. We don't know if she's omnipotent, but she's definitely omniscient. She's aware of everything that's going on. She's intrigued. And to her, it might be just a great, grand, big show. That might be her only interest in it. We don't know yet. There's a lot of, a lot of setup, a lot of buildup. Um, and I feel like with all this talk about soldiers is... It feels like this this could be something where it's it's a huge you know overarching storyline that's gonna go on another two to four seasons possibly. But for this season there needs to be some big conflict that's gonna be resolved and what will that be? We need a huge reward like Matt uh Bradford was saying. It's like I don't want uh Oh, it's tied up in five minutes, you know. I yeah. Want, I want, I want some, uh, something awesome, something for me to think about. See, and that, and that's that's that was my issue with with River Song. I felt like so much build up, and you're intrigued, but then it's like a complete letdown in the end. There could be there's still a possibility she come back. So I don't want people to get me wrong. I'm not trying to harp on that, but we... yeah, you you quoted River Song, so you're good. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was me trying to CYA a bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but anyway, we were going to talk about uh, more details. We got a good... Uh, we started about... We had like a four or five minute pre-show. Actually, it was only like two minutes. We didn't do much of a pre-show. No, it was five minutes. We'll say we have five minutes. In. Yeah. So we're at... Uh, we got about a good 12, 15 minutes left. Well, 10 minutes before we get into plugs and closing thoughts, because I'm sure we'll go off on another tangent then as well. So, again, no firm plans with the 50th anniversary group viewing. Um, I think we were leaning towards maybe September 19th or 21st. Um, so that'd be a Friday or a Sunday. Um, so, you know, so we could do some, like, Something before we do the show or after we do the show, depending how it works out. So stay tuned. Again, if you keep coming to the live shows, you know, on twitch.tv forward slash geekyantics or just on, on our website, geekyantics.net, it plays on there. But, you know, 
click the link and you can join the chat and be part of the experience you know and once we get a lot of people coming in we'll uh do more q a and involve the chat a lot more so uh, and we'll keep the the show notes lighter so it can be more conversational because again it is tea time so probably what will happen then is we'll have like uh the first hour will be the stuff we want to talk about and then the second half will be kind of the you know this chit chat with the chat with the chat room and whatnot a little banter you know know what i mean know what i mean nudge nudge yeah yeah um i'm I'm ready for tonight man the robot of sherwood i am excited about tonight. let's talk a little bit about that so there's a little bit of pushback from the community. I, I saw that on the Twitters. Twitter mm-hmm. is by far one of my favorite things because you can really listen to the zeitgeist. You can get a feel for the zeitgeist of any kind of, you know, subculture or fan base or community just by just listening in on, on some hashtags or just going into your native stream, you know. Um, and when you look at I look at my home stream. Uh, I, I keep tabs on like Geeky Antics uh, Twitter and my own cha- uh, Twitter uh, Yogizilla. But mainly the Geeky Antics one because I like on my cha- on my home stream I have a lot of like business marketing startup type stuff and that's cool. But I don't get as much of the real geek love in there. So I go over to the Geeky Antics one. I've seen all this Doctor Who talk and people are like, uh, I don't know Robin Hood uh, really? Uh, it's uh, no. And it's like, well, that's cool. He's always gone through, you know, history, meeting famous figures. So I think that's neat that they're going there. I mean, Sherwood, that's kind of a big part of, like, you know, the UK's history. So why not bring it into the, you know, into the Doctor Who universe? Exactly. Well, there's something interesting. And I didn't see it until recently. But this, this episode was actually leaked. And uh, your friends on... Uh, Castor Boris, um, we're talking about that. Oh, you did listen to it? A little bit. All right. <laughs> oh, and I do want to correct myself that the tambores is more, is better translated as drums. It's a type of drum. So yeah, okay. and, and, and a good catch by on, by Nick in the chat that, uh, th- that it's, it's referring to a quote from the show. So, you know, the drumming... Drums fingers on the table. Can't you hear it? Drums again. I thought it would stop, but it never does. Never ever stops inside my head. The drumming. <laughs> Doctor. The constant drumming. That's a good quote too. Nick Nick keeps you uh, straight and narrow, man. He is. I you know, I got it. he's a newer Doctor Who fan and I got him really into it. But I feel he's bad already to the master. He is. But, uh, you know, he, he he has the same problem. Even though he's a newer fan, he has the same problem that I have. It's like uh, the Tenant and Smith. M- Matt Smith more than Tenant take a while to, to get, you know, warm you up. Uh, we're a little spoiled in that aspect. Uh, and I feel Eccleston kind of set the bar really high. And then it's like, okay, what what, what are you doing for me? It's me. But, uh. Let's talk, let, before we forget, let's talk about real quick about the Soft Kitty song contest before and we go off on any tangents. Cause I know there's a little confusion there. So uh, inform us, Stan. Well, we Let's started this because you're having a little trouble with your sleep. And we thought, you know, maybe a little uh, Soft Kitty singing uh, would help you just like uh, it helps uh, Sheldon Cooper on uh, Big Bang Theory. Um, we invited everyone to call in and sing their best soft kitty into the Geeky Antics voicemail. That's uh, 1206-415-4987. What else? The prize. The prize is uh, somebody, maybe Yogi, maybe some, maybe the audience will choose uh, the three best uh, singers and uh, they'll get an epic Hearthstone plushy pillow. They're so soft. And, and and the reason you know we were gonna we were intending to do a Hearthstone tournament, but yes. with the uh, popularity uh, of this show with other projects, uh, it, it makes more sense to use those prizes here. Now, it might be a bit of a stretch for the community, but there's overlap. 
And, well, you know, we like to share parts of ourselves with you, our audience. Yes. Our, yeah. our new friends. So, Hearthstone is one of our favorite games. So, that makes sense. And you can play with us. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. We could do TWTT Hearthstone Nights. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you know, I would love to know. Um, I know we have a wide uh, range of ages. Uh, you know, like, like I keep mentioning, uh, Stan and I are old in age and uh, even older in, in our maturity and wisdom at times. At times. <laughs> But we're but we're also we also could be big kids. So yes, we, can. we like the video games, and you know we do some stuff that uh, folks in our age group don't normally do. Like I like to text message, which is unusual. Uh, my wife hates it. She's like, don't text message me. Just call me. It's like, well, it's easier. I got <laughs> I get the keyboard, you know. And sometimes I can't really stop and talk because you know we we're both we'll both talk each other's ears off and. You know, two minute conversation to a thirty minute, you know, uh, diatribe. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's us in a nutshell. I just went off on a diatribe. That's all right. <laughs> but yeah, if you do keeping call in, it real. we are keeping it real. But you know, I do want to say, if you call in, you don't have to identify yourself. I understand, and we respect everybody's anonymity uh, and, pr- and privacy. But if you want to enter the contest, give us some way to identify you. So when we do put all the, and we're still figuring out the spe- specifics of it all, but I think we will do it as a community vote. But again, we need someone to identify you, whether whatever you're most comfortable with giving. And you might not be comfortable giving an email address. We understand that. Um, but if you want to give like your Twitter name or Facebook or Instagram, Tumblr, something that we could tie in somehow. Um, I think at some point we have to, so we got to pull all the songs together. Maybe we'll give them some ID numbers and uh, right, and then someone can message us and say that was mine. Yeah, maybe that's what we just do. Is like when we get enough of them, we'll eventually set a, a deadline. Once we like get, you know really get momentum with this, you know, and I think it's gonna be at least two to three weeks out at least. Right. Um, because, you know, especially with all games, we want to get the audience community involved in it. So this might be a month-long thing, at least. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we'll get a bunch of them on, you know, let's say, let's say the magic number is 10. We get 10 of them, and then or 20. Um, then we just put them up on, on the site, nice, clean format, and have uh, people have a, set up a little player so people can play them right on the site. And, uh, and then we could do some kind of voting system. Yeah. I, I, awesome. def- but I definitely think community voting would be the best thing to do because, you know, I don't want to be like I don't want to be like king of the castle. I'm king of the castle. You know, <laughs> no. I don't want any hard feelings against it. Like, oh, Yogi, Yomar, Jomar, ¿por qué? <laughs> Jomar, ¿por qué me traicionas? No, 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 jamás, no, jamás lo pensaba. No, I don't know. Actually, we probably say jamás lo pensé. Yeah. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know, but yeah, <laughs> Conjug- okay. conjugation, conjugation, conjugation's OP. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't uh, have enough Spanish people around. Uh, actually, uh, uh, here in uh, Augusta, Georgia, we do have a Spanish community, but it's a like not, by me, it's a lot of Mexicans, and the way Mexicans speak Spanish is very different from us crazy Puerto Ricans. Well. I would say Puerto Ricans are more in the minority in the Spanish-speaking community than anything else. Like Spaniards and Mexicans speak very more proper Spanish for the most part. Well, Spanish are a whole different world. It's different. Spanish has a very a lot of different dialects, but uh, I would just say Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Dominicans. We use a lot of a lot of slang. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, share some with us. Share some with you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Or is it, or you can't because this is PG? Um, well, I, I mean, for example, the word bicho in most Spanish speaking countries means a bug or a little critter or a pest. For us Puerto Ricans, it is something very vulgar, uh-huh. an appendage of, sort, of sorts. Oh. Uh, that's some used to for happy times and or funk or just simple bodily function that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> so cool. yeah 
Uh, and there's a lot of examples of that kind of stuff. Um, one, oh, back, going back to food. One of my favorite things to eat is uh, what we call amarillos, which is uh, f- uh, fried bananas, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's um, they're like different kind of bananas. They're, they're more ripe, so they're very sweet. And when you fry them, it's just delicious. And, you know, the sweet and salty, you salt them up, and it's the sweet. The combination of sweet and salty is so good. But um, in other places, they don't call them amarillos. They call them maduros, which just means ripes. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, Nick says uh, that my proper name is Jogi. Jogi. <laughs> you know, hey man, I'm running out of time. No, I know, I know. I'm on top of it. Okay. So, yeah, we're about to wrap it up. But, yeah, just a little fun fact. In Spanish, a Y is pronounced as a J. So, jo- Jomar. Yomar is Jomar. Jomar. There you go. Yeah. So, they, they, some some knowledge being dropped here. But... Let's uh, we got some shout outs, and Stan, don't worry, I'm I'm a master with with the editing, so we're good. I know you are. Uh, if I mean, if our if our YouTube video is an hour and three minutes, I don't think people will mind. Okay, we're giving yeah. them every step of the way. It's good stuff. Give them a little conjugation, a little <laughs> subjugation. Not a <laughs> subjugation. <laughs> I just wanted to rhyme. It's like uh, what was that? That, that old uh. Schoolhouse uh, Rocks thing. Con- uh, conjugation. Conjunction. Conjunction. Fun- conjunction. What's, your What's your There you go. It was, it was right into it. Too. Yeah, dude. Well, I'm just a bill sitting on Capitol Hill. <laughs> so lonely. No. All right, bro. So what you got for us? You want to... I, I don't you... have any shout-outs. You don't have any shout-outs? You sure? I will next week. Well, before we close, we definitely want to give a nice nod to writing, art, and the eternal geek. Um, here's the last stanza from Maya Angelou's poem, Alone. Kind of reminds me of, it kind of reminds us of Doctor Who, really. Right, Stan? Oh, yeah. All right, so here we go. I'll try to do this in the best reading voice. Really, I think Stan should read it, but Stan wanted me to read it. Well, here yeah. we go. Now, if you listen closely, I'll tell you what I know. Storm clouds are gathering. The wind is going to blow. The race of a man is suffering. I can hear the moon. I can hear the moan, sorry. Cause nobody, but nobody, can make it out here alone. Oh, cuz. I'm killing this. See, this is why you gotta read it, bro. I'm not in my A-game. It's, it's too, early. too early. It's too early. So, yes. Cuz nobody, but nobody, can make it out here alone. Awesome. Al- alone. All alone. Nobody, but nobody can make it out here alone. Yeah. Me gusta. Me gusta. And that, that is perfect for Doctor Who. It is. Definitely fits. Sorry I butchered it, guys. I try. I need, I need to be more caffeinated next time. <laughs> there we go. And I, I, did all, I did all right. Next time it's going to be... You want to do any shout-outs to uh, all games and... Yeah, oh, so yeah. yeah. Make sure Follow. you su- and make sure you support our friends over at allgames.com. Uh R9 Cast, Knuckleballer Radio, Zombie Cast, um B Team Podcast, Gaming History One O One, uh Cat and Fox. Uh lots of great shows out there. And like I said, we're they're like on un- our unofficial sister network. So lots of love there. And um you know, podcasters as a whole tend to be very collaborative, but especially in all games. They're always willing to help out your projects, uh, whether it's podcasting or some other creative space. So nothing but love for the most part. There are some people that, like any other human beings, uh, exist in a void. That's unavoidable. And it's always people like that. It's like self-promotion. Oh, no. Cross-promotion. Oh, no. It's all about me, 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 me. <laughs> for the most part, it's, a lot, it's all love. So but we're changing the game, man. We are changing the game. People think it's crazy. There's, there are some haters. There are some haters, some salty dogs. They're like, man, it's like 20% of your show was plugs and love. Oh, give me a break. It's like, yeah, cause that's important. Someone's got to do it. If tons of people are doing 0%, then we got we to gotta, we gotta up the ante, you know? We got to make up. We got to make up for it, dude. Yeah. And hopefully get into the other spirit, get people in the, in, into the spirit of giving and paying it forward. Because that's beautiful. 
It is beautiful. And, and we're doing beauty here. You know, and we, we, you know, we're flawed like anyone else. We're not trying to be uh, self-righteous. But all it takes is the little things. You make the little efforts here and there over time. And that's how change comes about. It might be a slow burn, like uh, Series 8 of Doctor Who. But in the end, it's worth it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was surprised you didn't laugh at that. I, was, I had no. to. I feel it, bro. Oh, but, you know, Series 8, slow burn. Come on. That was <laughs> That, that, that was a heartbreak moment. I'm sorry. I'm a bit of a payaso sometimes, which is Spanish for clown. But we are wrapping this up. And um, we have any closing, closing thoughts we want to leave people with? We need you there next Saturday at 10 o'clock in allgames.com. We need your love. Right on. And if we don't start at 10 o'clock, we'll at least tweet out at 10 o'clock with the next steps. So keep an eye on our Twitter feed. That's probably the best place to reach us while we're mobile or anytime, really. So uh, at, uh, at uh, Yogizilla, that's me, Yomar. And uh, at Farina, F-A-R-Y-N-A. And at Geeky Antics for the network. Any yes. other places you want uh, people to visit you and bring you some love, bro? No, man. Come see. Come see the amazing story telling department at geekyantics.net awesome and now what one of my what's becoming one of my favorite parts of the show the the music gives all us you ready stan i'm ready man i know this part makes me happy too man <laughs> we hope that we brought you lots of joy today and uh i hope you're feeling the feels guys and i oh here we see Season uh, season eight, episode three tonight. Here we go. It's coming. Can't wait. See you next week, guys. See you next week. And don't forget to leave comments. Yes. Por favor. Tiny whiny tea time. You're listening to the Timmy Wimmy Tea Time Podcast, a geekyantics.net production where lovely and amazing people talk and ponder anything and everything about Doctor Who, science fiction, fantasy, zombies, the end of the world, creativity, writing and... Oh, heck yes. Anything else that geeks speak, question and think.